Well, my father raced cars in the in the fifties and before the war, and it was just a natural like farming. It was a way of life. It was a natural thing to do. And so how do you, as a 16-year-old boy, you've decided you want a Bentley, which firstly is quite surreal in 1950. Yeah. How do you go about buying a Bentley at the age of 16? Well, the, my first one cost me uh, £265, which I bought it off my father. And when I left school, he, he gave me a very small wage and two sows. And two, I, sows. Two, two pigs. Two pigs, right, okay. Yeah. And uh, I saved my money and bought this first Bentley off my father, got my brother to drive it until I passed my driving test. Yeah. And then uh, I went as a spectator to Silverstone, walked around the car park where you saw lots of racing cars and Bentleys, and I saw one that uh, appealed to me. Yeah. So I sat on the, on, the, on the step all day until the owner came along. <laughs> and. Uh, I said, how much do you want for this eight litre Bentley, a two seater, very yeah. powerful car. Always oh, said 250 pounds. Oh, I yeah. said, well, I can't afford that. So I said, let's go and have a cup of tea. Yeah. So he said, well, what could you afford? I said, 200 pound. Yes. So he said, right, done. So I held, he slapped my hand like that. <laughs> Deal was done. He delivered the next day. So my granddad's first car was a, a three litre Bentley, very similar to this one. And he still uses this uh, daily. I mean, he's, uh, he's 86 years old now. Now this car, this is our racing car. This is GSU 757. It's a 1926 three-litre chassis with a 1928 four and a half Bentley engine. So they put a, a much bigger engine in this car purely purely for racing. This is our, our racing car, and this gets uh, this gets used quite regularly. This is a nine-foot chassis, so they didn't actually make very many of these, and uh, this has had many guises. I, I know. To begin with, this was a saloon car. Um, had a big, big body on it. So now it's a, it's a two-seater aluminium racing car. Uh, this had a pretty big accident in 2015. So since then, we've had to rebuild it. It's all, all original parts. Uh, just, just took um, a lot to get it back to how it is now. So many of today's cars yes. are wealthy investors buy them. They're not racing people. No, I mean, no. Normally racing, you're brought up with it. Yes. And uh, they put them in a garage. It's their property. Nobody sees it. You don't That's hear it. That's a shame. That's a, whatever it's you buy, it needs to be out. It's never the same. To hear one of these is so... It's, to see a static you know, in a museum is, yeah. is not the same.
you have to you have to ride in the aero engines to believe it. You can't explain to anybody what it's like. I think 800 horsepower in a car that was made. Be well, some would go up to 1500 horsepower. Well, I'd rather not, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. You, 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 you the feel gentle with them. You know what you're up to. Yeah. You, you know, you you feel it. It's like flying a Spitfire. You you, you try, uh, fly it by the seat of your pants. <laughs> If you're doing a sprint, you can lock it into top gear, like Brighton Speed Trials, for instance. Yeah. And you can just uh, have it set it for 800 revs, which is not a lot on no. an engine, but it's only a tick over on these yes, engines. Yes, but yes. It's a lot on an aero engine. Wow. And as as the green light comes on, you t you just get the clutch to bite, and you go like this with both pedals, flat <laughs> on the accelerator, clutch right out, and it just take they it take just off. Goes, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs>